Now we come to Mesr. Now some of the Egyptologists, they have, you know, fixed the year of the entrance of Yusuf into Egypt as 1890 before Christ. And it seems to be like that because, you know, 2000 years or so, 2000 plus was the era of Hazrat Ibrahim alayhi salam. 2000 plus before Christ. And now because he is the great grandson of Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam, and he was 17 at this age when he, when he was thrown in the well and he was taken out and then he was sold. That was the 17th year of his age. And it was the year 1890 before Christ. Now they brought him to the market of the slaves in Egypt. And said the person who bought him, who purchased him in Misr, in Egypt, Limratehi, to his wife, Akrami Maswa, make his lodgings goodly. Asa and Farna, maybe that he gives us some benefit. We can sell him for a higher price. And it can also be possible that we adopt him as a son. They didn't have any son. And this is how we establish Yusuf in the land, fell out. Now you know it was a cradle of civilization. It was an, an empire. And this person, you know, he was Al-Aziz. So to say the chief executive officer, maybe in our terminology the prime minister, or the senior minister in the, uh, in the this system of, you know, in, uh, for example in French system, senior chief minister. So he was, he was having a very big position and now he was lodged in his house and people were coming over there, high gentry, aristocrats coming you know, and talking and he was listening to them. So actually he was trained over there for all the political affairs, all the affairs of, the, of community and all how or what are the problems, how they are set, how, how they are you know, resolved, resolved, how can they be solved. So all this thing, because he was lodged in the house of the chief executive of Egypt. Being there in that high society, at that house, because whenever some visitors would be coming to Al-Aziz of Misr, you know, he would call upon Yusuf, okay, bring this for him and for them and, you know, serve them and so on. So, so, on. so he was always listening to what was happening. In that way, he gained the capability of interpret interpreting all things, you know. Something is appearing to be something else and behind is something else. To know what is behind it, that is the tawilul ahadis. You go to the root, to the background. What is the real cause? What is the underlying cause? So that is actually tawilul ahadis. Linwallimahu min tawilul ahadis. Wallahu ghalibun ala amrihi. And surely Allah is all powerful over his command and over his decisions. But most of the people don't know it. They think what we are doing is best and it will happen as we are designing it and devising it to happen. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may use your ill designs against a person in a way that it becomes beneficial for him. And, we, and, we, and when he reached his maturity, about 18 or 19 years of age, mature, we gave him the judgment and the knowledge, the wisdom and the knowledge. And in this way, we reward the people who do good or who are best in their deen. And the woman in, whom, in whose house he was, she seduced, tried to seduce him sexually. And she closed the doors. And said, come on. He said, my refuge is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I take refuge in Allah. He is my Lord. And he has, you know, kept me here in the best of the ways. My lodging in best way. 
Now there is a different opinion. Rabbi means either Allah or the master. Because the master, you know, who has bought him. This was also an idiom of that time that he is the Rabb, he is the Lord. This should be used by Hazrat Yusuf salam to his two companions of the prison. And this word is used for your, your king or the, your master, Rabb. So this Rabb, you know, is a very, has a very broad meaning. Rabbul Mal, the owner of the capital. Rabbul Bayt, the owner of the house. So actually the Rabb, he was the master, the Aqa. To whom he was a bondsman because he had bought him. In the Hu so I can't, you know, I can't do this against him. You are his wife, and he kept me in the best of the ways. In the Hu verily, the evil doers can never prosper. And certainly she besought him, and he would also have besought her. Laula Ra Burhan Rabbihi. Had he not seen the Burhan of his Lord, of his Rabb. Now what is that Burhan? Generally it is said that there was a miracle. That on the wall appeared the figure of Hazrat Yaqub And he forbade him, don't hold yourself. But you know, Abdullah Yusuf Ali has uh, explained it in a very different way. And I think it's a beautiful way. I can't say that it is the only way, but it is a beautiful way. She was blind with passions and emotions. But Yusuf was spiritually, he was seeing. So actually this was the Burhan. He saw Allah. Because spiritually he, belong, he, belo he believed in Allah. She only th thought that nobody is seeing because I have already closed the doors. And she was blind due to passions. But you know Yusuf والسلام, because he believed in Allah who, who always sees. You are always in his sight. So that was the Burhan according to Abdullah Yusuf Ali. And Allah better knows. And it was so that we should turn away from him the evil and indecency and all shameful acts. And all shameful acts. Verily. He was from among chosen bondsmen. This is not mukhlisin. Some people have mistranslated it. Sincere. Mukhlis is something else. Mukhlas is something else. Mukhlis is ismul fa'il. And mukhlas is ismul maf'ul. And he was one of those whom we have chosen. Was al bab. Both of them raced towards the door. Hazrat Yusuf tried to run away. And she chased him. And this chase, you know, she caught hold of the shirt, definitely from the backside. And it was torn. And it came to happen that they found the Sayyid, the master, you know, the husband of that woman. He was on the door. Now look to the intelligence of this woman. She said, Oh, what should be the what should be the recompense of the one who who tried to have something bad and ill with your wife? Who tried to assault your wife? Illa Yustana, except this that he should be imprisoned, or Azabun Alim, or some other painful torment. Yusuf said. It is she who tried to seduce me sexually. Now this is very important. Both of them, you know, two just persons. They appear to be very just. Now a person from her family, in Ahleha, in Ahleha, belonging to her family, he gave a witness, he gave a testimony. If his shirt is torn from the front, then she is correct. She is telling the truth. And he is from among the liars. And if his shirt has been torn from the back, then she is telling a lie. And whatever he is saying is true. And when he saw that the shirt of Yusuf was torn from the back, 
قال ان نہ من قید کن امیجیٹلی ہی سیڈ او ٹو ہز وائف او اٹ از فرام یور میکینیشن فرام یور گائل ان نہ قید کن نہ آتی ویری لی دی میکینیشن گائلس گائلس آف یو ویمن آر ویری گریٹ یوسف آر از انہازا ناؤ ہی اپیل ٹو یوسف یو جسٹ اگنور اٹ ڈونٹ مینشن دس ٹو اینی بڈی جسٹ یو نو keep quiet about it and just ignore it yusuf arid an hadha wa taqfiri li zambiki and he said to his wife and you should beg pardon of your sin of your ill deed and innaka kunta min al khatiin verily you were the evil doer and you were the guilty 